So we all know the common ones. Confident gentlemen never ask for directions. They never fully read the instructions and they never choose the restaurant on where they're gonna go eat. Just kidding. Really though, in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about some of the lost cultural markers of manhood and how they can be recovered. Stay tuned. So before we jump into this episode, we like to start with our handshake. And the handshake, the masculine virtue today, is building a rule of life into your day. That's a schedule, an order that you can go through from beginning to end of your day and that you generally follow. <clears throat> it's so important for men to order their days rightly so that they can grow in virtue, grow in holiness, and be an example for others. So I encourage you to start small. It doesn't have to be a huge rule of life that every 30 minutes is decided for you. It's if you're living a monastic tradition or something along those lines. But start by at least waking up at the same time every morning. So hopefully we all have examples of gentlemen in our life that we looked up to. I know that for me, I have two that pop right out. I feel very blessed to have experienced these men in my life. but. Mm -hmm. One of them is my father. Yeah. So my father uh, was a gentleman, whether he ever defined himself like that or not, uh, mm -hmm. not the case. But I remember as a kid, him waking up and leaving for work at 5.45 a.m. Yeah. Every morning. Wow. And he was always dressed in a suit, had his leather briefcase, always looked presentable, but was always on time and understood the responsibility that he carried for taking care of our family. Mm, yeah. And what an example. Even if he didn't love his job, he did it. Yeah. You know, that John Wayne quote that you've mentioned a couple times, he saddled up anyways. Mm. And that example for me was something that I'll always be grateful for having had in my life. Another man is my grandfather, uh, my mother's father. He went to mass every day. He was an utmost in respect uh, of others and in dignity, and even willing to go to bat and protect those that were vulnerable. He understood uh, Holy Mother Church and her teachings. He adopted them, but I think that character of um, masculinity that he portrayed to all of us was was that of of charity and uh, and love so those are two examples and and I just couldn't be more thankful uh, for them in my life yeah yeah in my life too I think of uh, my stepdad who I consider a real gentleman but he always treated everybody with extreme courtesy and respect mm. Um, even if they weren't very respectful to him, but he yeah. just had that marker about him. But also he, just little things that he would do, like when it was, you know, freezing cold out. We grew up in Wisconsin, you yeah. know, so it was often cold in the winters and it was snow coming down and, you know, massive drifts. And, you know, he'd go out, you know, after after church, after he, uh, after after church was over, he would he would go out in the snow and he'd warm up the van for yeah. us. And he'd wait till it was warm and then he'd come and get us, you know, and uh, make sure that, you know, we didn't really have to endure any discomfort there just because he was a gentleman, yeah. you know, and that's what gentlemen do. And we could right. have all tramped out there with him, but he, he wanted to make sure. Right. Um, and did he ever met, yeah. complain about that? Oh, no, no, no. Exactly. In fact, he seemed eager to do it. Amen. And, and just as a act of kindness and generosity. And I could give lots of other examples of things that he did, but I... Yeah, I really look up to him as, as a real gentleman. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I think that's really what we're going to jump into in the episode today is what happened to that, right? We've all seen those memes of men 60 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, dressed up in a suit, uh, had the, you know, fedora or trilby or some sort of 
you know, hat on with the briefcase uh, compared to men of the same age today that are often still living uh, with their parents in their 30s. Uh, they are um, wearing uh, tie-dye shirts and capri pants and they have a mohawk <laughs> and, and we see these things and we uh, wonder, is there a crisis of masculinity? Is there a crisis mm -hmm. of what it means to be an authentic man in today's society? And I know I sure believe there is, yeah. and that we have a duty to carry ourselves, to learn what it, it means to be an authentic man mm -hmm. and to carry ourselves with that sort of um, pride and, mm -hmm. uh, and authenticity. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there is a crisis both in the substance of what it means to be a man as well as in those external cultural markers right. of manhood that give shape to um, cultural expressions of manhood. So, for example, men have not always dressed the same. Right. Okay, So, you know, an Edwardian gentleman in a top hat For and sure. white gloves uh, was not the same as a Renaissance gentleman in, you know, yellow tights. Right, <laughs> Thank goodness. right. Well, so, right? Uh, <laughs> Thank but, goodness. <laughs> but nevertheless, the essence of manhood has always That's been right. the same, that, that courteousness, that self-sacrifice, that respect for the dignity of others, um, that generosity, that largeness of heart that gentlemen have always represented. Um, but even that has, has been lost in our culture. Mm. So not only have we lost the, <clears throat> excuse me, external markers, but also the internal substance of manhood has yeah. um, been eroded in our culture. So they yeah. often go hand in hand. Yeah, for sure. You know, and I, I do, I think there were cultural norms uh, that were in place years ago that made certain things unacceptable, right? right? So maybe the outward sign wasn't reflective of the inward heart or devotion sure. of the man, sure. but they were presented in such a way that you were, you know, the exterior were unaware of the difference, yeah. you know? But today, anything goes yeah and you can wear whatever you want you can do whatever you do this me culture is let everybody do what they want when they want how they want as long as it's not affecting me and if it is affecting me then it's wrong yeah and i think that's a huge disservice to men of today because how are young men who are maybe uh, without a father mm -hmm. or young men who are grappling with these and understanding what does it mean to be a boy? What does it mean to, you know, I, I see the biological difference, mm -hmm. but what is it any more than that? And when society pushes the opposite mm -hmm. and accepts everything, yeah, then anything goes, you know, and... And I just think that that's, that's such a disservice. And so how much more grace is needed today to, to rise up and to fill in the void um, of, of masculinity today? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you think, too, of um, codes of honor and things in the past, yeah. manners. Manners are kind of a, a, a codified rules of respect. Yeah. Uh, and... You know, so it was, our culture kind of rebels against that today. Um, for example, and some uh, and sometimes, you know, if you behaved in the wrong way in the past, yeah. you might experience some shaming. Yeah. Now, our culture recoils against that. Right. But in the past, the understanding was some behavior is shameful. That's right. You should be ashamed of <laughs> acting like that. Um, an example was, you know, I was reading some of the Little House on the Prairie books to our kids sure. when, when they were younger. And, um, you know, there, there's this kind of scene where these guys are using coarse language, you know, when yeah. that's what they would call following no, by the, yeah, exactly. you know, coarse language. Um, and, you know, but then a woman walked in the room and the, the guys immediately stopped. Yeah. You know, they, they cleaned up their act right away, just yeah. out of respect to that lady walking in the room. Yeah. No, it's just us guys, you know, whatever. But as soon as a woman walks in the room, we're done, you that's know. Right. And there was that cultural understanding that, a woman were worthy of respect. Yeah. Um, and if you disrespected a woman, you'd be shamed. Unacceptable. And, yeah. and again, like our culture, like, oh my goodness, shame is so toxic. Well, in some cases it can be, absolutely. But, yeah. but the point was that sometimes treating somebody shamefully deserves, 
you know, shame. That's like, correct. You should you shouldn't act that correct. way. Correct. You should be ashamed of that. Yeah. Um, and so that's not always wrong. And, no. And today we can we should yeah. call out our our brothers. Yes. And and our friends when when they act as such. Yeah. And and hopefully they're calling us out, right? Yes, right. Because we're all um, our brother's keeper. We're all helping in this together, yeah. you know? And yeah, if somebody does something foolish or if somebody uh, does something uh, toxic to themselves and others, you know, it's, it's, it's of the good to mm -hmm. charitably correct them, Yes, you know? And so, Sam, something that you and I have talked about to clarify things is, is what is a gentleman, mm -hmm. you know? And I know we can wane on and we can go for long periods of time and talking about outward and inward expressions of a gentleman, but generally speaking, how would you uh, define a gentleman? And I know in, in your book, The Catholic Gentleman, uh, you, you mm -hmm. save a number of pages to this. So. Yeah, yeah, well, I think it is a man who is got the raw material of manhood, that is, he's He's confident. He's, you know, he's got a courage. He's got virtue. He's maybe even a little bit dangerous in the sense that he has the potential to uh, defend when he needs to defend and, you know, fight when he needs to fight. But, but all of those, that raw material of manhood yeah. has been disciplined. Right. It's been channeled and it's all been oriented towards the good of the community and, and good of the other ultimately. Yeah. Um, so all of that uh, raw material manhood has been shaped, it's been sculpted, it's been disciplined into something um, that can be a you know, tremendous good to society and to those in it. Now, we all know what the opposite looks like. We all know about a guy who may have you know, giant biceps and yet yeah. may be an overgrown boy inside That's right. who can't control himself, who's always you know, picking fights and chest thumping and trying to be aggressive in... Um, you know, just as rude and insensitive and cowardly. Yeah. Um, you know that. You know, there's there's uh, all kinds of names for people like that right. that we won't use on this <laughs> show. Right. But the point is, um, a gentleman uh, seeks the good of the other, and he uses that strength and that masculinity that is a gift from God. He's he's honed it and he's used it for the good of others. That's right, and it doesn't happen overnight. No, you know so. I know that I like to talk about and discuss the, you know, these themes and understandings of the the disruption after original sin, right? Mm -hmm. And so that disruption of mind and heart, yeah, right, where our our thoughts and our emotions are not always aligned, yeah, and uh, and that of our will mm -hmm. is not um, directed uh, to the good; it's directed to whatever is going to give us pleasure in that moment, yeah. Also, the disruption between ourselves and our neighbors mm -hmm. and the disruption between ourselves and God. And when I'm just hearing you talk, I think a gentleman is the individual that is working on unifying those things so that he's in control of his emotions. Mm -hmm. He's in control of his passions and his desires. Mm -hmm. He is disciplined, as you stated, in that aspect. And he is also working on bettering the lives of others, mm -hmm. right? And, and what better way to do that from that ultimate source, which is God, which is the good, the true, and the beautiful, and, and the eternal mm -hmm. um, God, so united in that way, then he's able to grow day by day in holiness. But if we don't have even the beginning of an understanding that that's what we should be shooting for, that yeah. that's a target set um, in front of us and an arrow guiding correctly, yeah. then we spend years wandering, yeah. you know, years lost in, in doubt and, you know, the uh, thoughts of the world and opinions of the world, which are ever changing, you know, and what you and I, the world was teaching when we were kids is different, radically different even than today. Yeah. And we see that progression with, yeah. you know, cell phones and, and pornography use and, um, fatherlessness and, you know, all of these things. And, you know, the growing uh, agnostic, you know, right. faith of, of men uh, today. And so, and if you ever were to press individuals on these things, it'd be hard for them to come up with a why, but that in it of itself is something that I think we need to work on yeah. is, is discussing the why 
and growing in that understanding. And it's not an easy task, and it takes love, it takes friendship. But yeah, yeah. So the 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 idea that um, you know we've we've lost these external markers, and I want to emphasize. We're going to talk about some of the external yeah. markers here in a second, but I want to emphasize that. Um, you know, men haven't always looked the same, but again, yeah. these attributes that we're talking about, about virtuous self-control, yeah. towards seeking the good of the other and things like that, those are essential to manhood. So I would say that, you know, that Edwardian gentleman yeah. that we talked about right. in the top hat, you know, yeah. it, he could be a true gentleman, yeah. just like um, I would say a first century Jew, like Jesus yeah. Yeah. could have been a gentleman as well. And Jesus was the ultimate gentleman in the sense that he... Um, had all strength, all power in his hands yeah. at all times, and yet he never abused it. Yeah. Um, and in fact, he used it to defend and to aid the weakest, the most vulnerable, um, the wounded, those who uh, were suffering in some way. Those were the ones to whom yeah. Jesus rushed, really. That's like right. everyone else was telling him to shut up. That's you know, right. Stop crying out and you know, leave Jesus alone. He's got more important things to do. Yeah, He's absolutely. the Messiah, you know, just leave yeah. him alone. And he would say, no. Stop. I came for people just like that. Yeah. And again, he had all power, he had all divine power, creative ability in his hands. He could have wiped out the entire Roman army with a snap of his fingers. Right. Uh, but what did he use that strength, that power for? To heal, to right. bind up, and to elevate those who were around him. And that's what a gentleman does. It sure does. I like that you're hitting on the fact that the faces of gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Uh, are, are many, yes. you know, and I think about our church and I think about, you know, the, the St. Jerome or the St. Damon of Malachi, yes. <laughs> which we know, uh, you know, were, uh, if, if you've read their lives, you know, struggled with anger, you know, struggled with quick temperedness, yeah. you know, but then you have St. Francis of Assisi, mm -hmm. you have, um, uh, St. Martin uh, de Tours. You have you have the humor of St. Philip Neri or St. John Bosco, yeah. you know, and, and that's what we think about when we think about those two men is that they were always, you know, looking for games, looking for unique ways, you know, wearing mm -hmm. your hair shirt on the outside instead <laughs> of the inside, you know, St. John Bosco uh, doing magic tricks to teach uh, the faith of the Lord. All of these yeah. are men yeah. that... Uh, you know, it's not it's not the guy who goes and works out every day or does yeah. two a days or the guy who takes the discipline and, and pulls his his uh, belt off and whips himself with it. Yeah, right, you right. know, it's not the guy who takes on uh, the the utmost of of pain and suffering and picks himself up by his bootstraps. It can be anything, yeah. you know, but that that temperament that God gave us that disposition that mm -hmm. God gave us unique uh, to ourselves is exactly what we're still called to cultivate yeah. and, and to work with in this direction for truth and unity as, yeah. as a gentleman. And so. I think it's important that we emphasize that you can be a gentleman, you know, being, you know, a steel worker in Detroit yeah. or, uh, you know, a ranch hand in Wyoming That's right. um, or a businessman uh, on Long Island, you know, um, uh, Manhattan. Yeah. Um, you know, you can be a gentleman in thousands of different contexts. You can wear thousands of different outfits. Yeah. It's not about wearing, you know, $500 gloves, That's right. um, you know, or, you know, the, the most beautiful shoes having, or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, the most money. And while those yeah. things, you know, aren't aren't wrong and they in fact can um if that's our context that we're living in, it might not yeah. be a bad thing to aspire to. Nevertheless, like the faces of gentlemen are many and I've tried to emphasize that from the beginning of the Catholic gentleman. Yeah, absolutely. And you do a great job with that. And I think that's uh really important. But one of those common themes which I think uh to to just drive home here is the building of virtue, right? Mm -hmm. The gentleman is the one who is building in virtue. And what are virtues? Are Those are those habits that we are working to acquire so that we move through our day to day with the good, with control, with um, obviously a reliance on God's grace, his confidence and not ours. But if you're not working on virtues, if you're not even aware of what a virtue is, and therefore don't even know how to strive towards that good, um, you're just 
the days are passing you by with, yeah. uh, without any growth and holiness. Yeah. I was thinking of, you know, virtue, we're talking about virtue being habitual or yeah. disposition. Basically, this, the nutshell version of that yeah. is we want to make goodness easy. Yeah. Sometimes it's really hard for us to make the right choice. But when you're a virtuous man, goodness comes naturally to you right. as breathing. That's you right. know, and you're a musician, you know yeah. this. Um, I, was, I was listening to someone talk about practicing music, and yeah. they said the first thing, at first, it's extremely hard. That's the truth. You've got to learn the very basics of the notes and how to play them, and it just feels like torture, yeah. you know. But then, one day, it just becomes easy. Yeah. And things that used to be impossible, seem impossible to you, you're doing a second nature. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're talking about when we're talking about virtue, is making doing the right thing yeah. As easy as breathing. I like it. Where you just habitually just do it. You just do it. You don't think about it. Yeah. Because it's a habit. It's part of your character. It's part of your nature now. That's right. Um, yeah, that's you, what virtue is all about. That's right. You don't frequently have to ask, what would Jesus do? Right. You know, <laughs> it's it's part of your your very fabric and, you know, essence of your day-to-day -day operations. Yeah. I like that a lot. And I appreciate you triggering me with music. And you're exactly right. And as a teacher of uh, young musicians, it's... I remember being in those situations. I remember holding my trumpet and trying to get 45 minutes to two hours a day in a practice, you know, in like fifth and sixth grade and seventh grade and, yeah. and growing in that. And then all of a sudden, every single thing that I struggled with in my high school years is I can do in my sleep. Yeah. I can do, you know, at any time. And, and it's because... I, you know, I work towards it. It's exactly right. And, and that, that discipline is something that, again, is not easy. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to always seek counsel. You know, if they're struggling with it, seek that help of, of others and, and mm -hmm. maybe ordering things uh, rightly or ordering things in a way that is conducive to your uh, position and your uh, time in life, right? So mm -hmm. the disciplines that I was working on in high school or you know college years are very different than mm -hmm. the disciplines that I work on now as a husband with five kids yeah. and I think it should be it's it, there's a never there's never end right yeah, and that's right. that's the joy that we we end when we um, by all things good and, and grace and holy we we achieve eternal um, reward that's that's what our goal is but we always strive for that as as gentlemen so I like that a lot uh, now we're going to talk about some simple do's and don'ts to begin living our virtuous lives uh, and growing in confidence as a man. Because yeah. sometimes we do need those uh, external anchor points. That's right. That can keep us from getting kind of lost on the sea of uh, the many voices right. that are telling us this is what you need to be happy. Um, and there's a lot of voices competing for our attention now. Mm -hmm. Um, and so sometimes these external markers can be helpful reference points to keep us oriented Absolutely. Um, on the path to virtue. Absolutely. And it's that internal voice, too. I want to bring that up. And I wasn't until you, you talked about that. But there's that internal voice of the easy road mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how frequently we yearn for the easy road yeah. and the easy way. And that includes waking up, I talked about in the handshake, setting your rule of life, hitting the snooze button, you yeah. know, or waking up and uh, not making your bed, right? I think mm -hmm. of that great YouTube video that you reminded me of, of that uh, naval officer yeah. who's, you know, talking about, uh, you want to change the world, you know, start by making your bed. Yeah. And... How many times does somebody who's dedicated to making their bed wake up and think, today I'm not going to make my bed. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to notice, right. right? And that internal voice, that temptation is, is in us both yes. and is something that we are constantly having to push against, yeah. you know? So. Yeah, greatness or lack thereof is determined by little things. Thousands of little things adding up either to a poor character or a great character. Um, so those little choices matter. Yeah. But to, right now we're going to talk about quick seven things, yep. seven external things that we as men can practice to kind of confirm ourselves in, as a virtuous gentleman 
Um, and we won't belabor these, so yeah, don't, exactly. don't worry, you're not going to be here for two hours. <laughs> um, but we want to just kind of give you seven things that you can apply to your own life. That's right. Uh, as you seek to be a gentleman. That's right. So the first thing is, is, is your behavior. Yeah. And I would say your morning routine, right? So that's the easy, practical aspect of behavior. We were already alluding to it. Um, the waking up before your family, right? Mm -hmm. Or waking yeah. up at a set time. If you don't have a family, waking up at a set time every morning and then going directly to your prayer time. Yeah. I am a huge proponent and a huge fan because I've experienced... 20 some years not doing this. Mm. I'm a huge proponent. I have made my bed. My mom, mom set that in on me, but I'm a big proponent of turning to prayer time right away before the worries and anxieties have really have, or even have the opportunity to start clicking in your brain, you know, so that you can focus on that, which is most holy. So yeah. I'd say behavior. And if I were to give a direct bullet point associated with behavior, I'm thinking waking up in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. The other aspect of behavior that I really want to emphasize too is treating holy things as if they were holy. Mm. Okay. So uh, nothing drives me more crazy than going to mass um, and seeing somebody in, you know, rubber flip flops, you know, SpongeBob t shirt <laughs> or something, you know, and ripped, ripped off, cut off jeans, yeah. shorts, you know, it just, uh, you know, and approaching the Lord with complete casualness and disrespect and over familiarity. Um, yes, Jesus loves us. Yes, he's our <laughs> friend. But you can't forget that he's the God of the universe. Right. Um, and there's literally angels veiling their face in front of him. You know, angels that could snap their fingers and, you know, throw us into oblivion. Yeah. They still respect God and say, holy, holy, holy. That's right. Um, so we need to treat holy things with holiness. When you enter a church, you genuflect. You cross That's yourself. Right. You, know, you show that respect to that is due to the God of the universe. Yeah. Um, and you don't treat holy things casually, indifferently, um, overly familiar. That's right. Um, you, you show God the respect that he deserves. You know, I think of the book of Isaiah when, yeah. when he saw, he said, God high and lifted up, you know, on his, yeah. his throne and his train filling the temple. He's like, first thing he said was like, woe is me. I am undone. Basically I am destroyed. That's yeah. what he said. Like you just so overawed by God's presence. And, Christ does come to us in humility in the Eucharist, um, but we should strive to do our best to show him that respect. That doesn't mean you wear a tuxedo to Mass, right. but it does mean you strive to show God the respect that he deserves um, in whatever way you can. And it's and it, it's more a matter of the heart than the externals, but the heart should be reflected in the externals. Um, we, we should be careful not to divorce those two, as some people like to do, and say, well, only the heart matters. Well, no. Your your heart is inevitably expressed in your your actions, so I agree. reflect that in your yeah, behavior. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. And that uh, there was a time when you would walk in front of a Catholic church where you would take your hat off mm -hmm. and do yeah. the sign of the cross out of respect yeah. for uh, the Catholic Mass and things that had happened at any time. And I encourage uh, gentlemen listeners to always do the sign of the cross when they mm -hmm. when they go in front of a church. It's just one little reminder. Yeah. of keeping um, the holy holy yes. and, and not mm -hmm. uh, not being too casual and too flippant with it. So yeah. uh, it's good you brought up attire and mass. And I think that number two, you know, of our seven things is that a gentleman never wears pajamas and slippers and um, a ratty t-shirt to Walmart. <laughs> so, you know, or out because a gentleman understands that his outward appearance is reflective on himself, his dignity and self-worth. It's also reflective on his family. Yeah. And it's also reflective on his faith, right? Yeah. And so Francis de Sales talked a lot about the importance of being groomed and, and cleanly yep. because people, um, you never know when that divine appointment is going to present itself yeah. and when you are going to be uh, called to... Uh, a discipleship and to evangelize and that if you are you know ratty tatty and you're un it's undesirable to to be around you then uh you're not doing yourself a service or others yeah yeah i heard someone tell a joke once they said you know i was recently in walmart and they didn't have what i needed so now i have to go home take a shower and put on some real clothes and go to target <laughs> <laughs> and uh but really, though, like that that whole point of 
self-respect self as well as respect for others yeah. because what are clothes well they're a form of communication mm. they're a form mm. of saying something about us to someone else so if you go to walmart in in your fuzzy slippers yeah. uh in your 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 pajama pants what you're saying is not only do you not matter I don't matter. That's I right. am not worthy of respect, and you are not worthy of respect. That's right. And it's a form of communication. So, you know, does that mean again that we have to wear, you know, Brooks Brothers everywhere and exactly. uh, you know, suits and ties? And people used to, oh, right. uh, but in our context, that might be a little over the top. top yeah. Um, but we still should dress with dignity and respect, even if it's with great simplicity. You yeah. know, there's times when I've. Um, it's oftentimes about how you carry yourself too. You know, right. there's times when you you can wear a t-shirt um, that, in the context, is totally appropriate. Yeah. Um, but the way you carry yourself and the dignity with which you carry yourself can can translate to others. Right. Um, so just be aware that clothes are communication, um, and you are saying something about yourself and about other people with what you wear. That's right. Um, if, other than that, I don't want to prescribe any specific specifics. rules about yeah. what's appropriate wear. You know, yeah, but. agreed. And, you know, and these aren't, these aren't absolutes like you were just saying. Like there's, there are those moments when we are under the car working and we need a new socket and we've got yeah. to run to O'Reilly or AutoZone or, you know, one of those locations or we are, uh, you know, in the midst of putting up a fence and right. we need an extra fence board and have to run to Home Depot you know, I'm not saying stop everything you're doing, go change what you're right, wearing right. for these situations, but but those are exceptions uh, to the rule, right? right. Those are um, uh, infrequent, yeah. and so when you're frequently going out, have that have that respect and yeah. uh, for yeah. yourself and for others. I love that idea that your clothes are communicating to others. Mm -hmm. I've never actually heard that, and I think you're exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Well, the next thing we want to talk about is something that. Uh, yeah. Gets me a little worked up sometimes. <laughs> but it's this idea of if you're going to ask a girl out, yeah, don't do it by text. Right. And for goodness sake, if you're going to break up with her, don't do it, it by text. text. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that we, we use technology as a screen, a defense yep. against our own insecurities mm -hmm. a lot of times. Um, and that's not a good habit to get into. Agreed. You know, there's that saying uh, that this reminds me of that nice guys finish last and I've come to realize that that saying generally is from men who are cowardly mm -hmm. and lack the courage mm -hmm. to go experience failure mm -hmm. and then keep on going. Yes, you know, so true. And so what happens when we have never, we're fearful that uh, a girl is going to turn us down or mm -hmm. a girl is going to say no then we, uh, yeah, we hide behind that phone and we shoot that text and we say, um, you know, hey, will you, will you go on a date with me? A gentleman never does that. Yeah. A gentleman never does that. I also think a gentleman, like you said, never breaks up with a girl. Why? Because uh, via text, because women all have innate dignity yeah. that we have to respect at all times, all humans. But um, but in this situation with courting women, be a man mm -hmm. and uh, verbally communicate that and be prepared for, for you know, the no. And yeah. that's OK. Well, and what a great opportunity to practice courage. Yeah. Okay? If you think about a lot of our lives these days, we don't have a lot of opportunities for courage uh, you know, we're not like the, you know, the, the uh, soldiers uh, 67 years ago storming the beaches of Normandy. Normandy right. right um, and, and thank God we haven't had World War Three yet. Yeah. Um, but the point being that that it is, I understand the fear of rejection can be very powerful. Yeah. Um, and but it paralyzes a lot of young men today. Absolutely terrified of making a mistake. That's right. Um, and honestly, I, um, when I was in, in school, uh, I asked a lot of girls out and got a lot of no's yeah. <laughs> and it hurt every time. Yeah. And yet every time I got a little bit braver. That's right. Um, and when you're seeking a spouse, all you need is one girl to say yes. Right. <laughs> so, um, but no, that, that, that facing those fears was so good for me. Yeah. So good for me. Um, and yeah, it hurt, but it, I grew tremendously through that. So use that as an opportunity to face your fears, man up. 
and right. you know, plunge in um, and see what God will do. Even if there's a no, it's not the end of the world. That's right. You can always recover. You can always keep moving forward. Um, so don't let that fear paralyze you. I completely agree. Yeah. And so with courage, as we're talking about, it's a great segue into the next one, which is defending a, a woman's honor. Yeah. And so this idea that all women are um, uh, created as we are in the Imago Dei, you know, in the image of God, they are all deserving of our respect. It is important for us as gentlemen, whenever the case might happen, that a female is being disrespected, that mm -hmm. a gentleman will stand up. Mm -hmm. for her dignity. Yeah. And so it's easy to think about our wives and our daughters, you know, and standing up, or maybe our mothers to stand up in these situations. But it's also necessary to stand up for um, for women in general, you know, if, if it's in a grocery store, you know, yeah. and she's in need of help and, right. and these sort of things. So a gentleman understands that and is willing to uh, to yeah. stand up. An example, babe, like, you know, a woman struggling with a bunch of heavy suitcases. I've seen someone do this yeah. on an airplane where oh, she's yeah. trying to get a heavy suitcase in the overhead bin, you know, and a guy will come up and he'll say, hey, let me help you with that. And he'll lift it up. Um, and what a great opportunity to be a gentleman. But yeah. also another example that is kind of from my own life. Yeah. Um, and back then I was more cowardly and I, I regret sure. not standing up, but, you know, locker rooms. Yeah. Guys can talk extremely crude about girls in yeah. locker rooms. I experienced that myself. Yeah. And, you know, what a what a great opportunity to be a gentleman and say, you know, hey, stop talking about her like that. That's yeah. not cool. Yeah. Don't do that. You know, defend a woman's honor even if she's not there. Correct. Um, and I think that's what that's the standard we should strive for as men is to always respect that image of God because really the external appearances, let's face it, some people can be kind of externally yeah. uh, unattractive in their behavior. Yeah. They can be rude. They can be crude. Some women don't externally deserve respect because they're not respectful. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's just a veil yeah. over what you are saying is really the image of God uh, imprinted deep on their soul. And that's what we need to reveal yeah. to them, even if they don't realize it about themselves. That's right. Some women have never been treated with dignity Correct. or respect in their entire life. That's they right. don't even know what that looks like. Mm. So when you treat them with dignity, it, like, it, it just blows their mind. They don't even know what to make of that. But we're called to do it even if they don't feel like they want it or if they don't deserve it. Regardless, we treat them with respect no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Uh, another thing, I guess number five in our list here, is that a confident gentleman never consistently requires others to make decisions. Mm. So a confident gentleman can get over himself, maybe his melancholic nature, if that's the temperament. Mm -hmm. And this is not an excuse to be forceful or arrogant or, you know, prideful. Like, yeah. this is the only way. So I know that that's something that a lot of men struggle with. But we've been talking about men that aren't aware of, of what is right and aren't aware of how to step in, yeah. you know, to the, um, to the situation arise to the occasion mm -hmm. as the situation might call for. Well, I know one thing in my particular marriage that my wife is always appreciative mm -hmm. is if I make the decision on eating out. <laughs> yeah. so we don't go out often, but when we do, it's, um, it, the, uh, all our kids have different opinions and my wife has already made a thousand disparenting decisions that day yeah. and, and she's just in need of me, you know, to, to make that decision. And it's a delicate balance because I want to consult with her and I want to make sure I'm not choosing a place that, mm -hmm. that she would, uh, not care for. But in those situations, like, we'll have a backup then, because if you suggest this mm -hmm. and she says, well, I'm not really feeling that, yeah. then you're prepared with the next option. But requiring her to make that decision because you're not willing to commit or maybe you're not even willing yeah. to pay attention in that moment yeah. is uh, not um, a, a trait of a true gentleman. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate that you emphasized that we need to be careful with that because I've definitely forced some things in the mm. past that I regret um, in my family. But there's, But also oftentimes, often... 
women look to the man in the in the home to make a decision. They don't want to carry that burden. No. Because what but men, why do we avoid that? Yeah. We want to avoid consequences. Yeah. Well, what if I make the wrong decision? Right. You know, what if I picked a restaurant and nobody likes it? But sometimes with bigger, bigger decisions, it's even more important than that. Like, are we gonna move or are we gonna stay? Are we going to take this job or are we not gonna take this job? You know, things like that. And men like there's that fear wells up within us. What if I make the wrong choice? Um, and there's negative consequences yeah. from that. And so we just say, oh, no, honey, you you decide. And we, we make it, maybe even make it sound like we're being courteous. Yeah. But really, we're just afraid. Like, no, I'm going to t- make this decision and accept the consequences that come with that before God. You know, yeah. and, and that's something that takes a lot of courage. It We've sure talked is. about the, the courage in almost every I one believe, of these points have, so far. Yeah. You know, but the, it's, it's a development or a virtue that we all need to develop. Um, but make the decision, man up, and just plunge in and accept the consequences come what may. Use your prudence, use your best judgment, but then leave the consequences to God. Agreed. And so number six, which is also uh, uniquely uh, good stair-stepping that we're doing here, and I can say that it wasn't the intent, is uh, humility, right? So uh, a true gentleman avoids arrogance at all costs. Yeah. And so it doesn't mean that you are not called to be a leader. It doesn't mean that you are not called to make decisions, Mm -hmm. but you do so uh, humbly. You do so without, with magnanimity, as we spoke about um, in a previous episode. You do so with um, that understanding that all that are entrusted to you or all that are in that situation, be it an employer, you know, uh, who needs to be a leader, be it a military general that needs to be a leader, mm-hmm. um, or a father that in many cases needs to be a leader, uh, he does so with humility. Yeah. He does so with an understanding that everyone there has equal dignity and is yeah. on their own path to uh, to hopefully to holiness and to, to growth in life. Yep. Yeah, humility is truth. It's acknowledging what you are. Uh, it's acknowledging your creaturely limitations. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think no matter how great of a man you are, yeah. uh, you're still small in the scale of things. <laughs> yeah. You know, even if you're an incredibly accomplished businessman or something, there's probably always somebody more accomplished or greater than you For are. Sure. You know, even if you're you know the greatest philosopher or theologian, there's probably one that's even greater than you. And even if that's <laughs> not true, yeah. there's still angels and archangels and cherubim and seraphim there's way more powerful creatures in the universe than you um, i remember uh the things are really perspective can make a big difference yeah. I, I remember i was flying recently mm. and i remember you know things look different from twenty thousand feet you look down on these massive skyscrapers that somebody might have been very proud about building yeah but from twenty thousand feet it looks like a twig, you know, That's it looks right. like nothing, less yeah. than nothing. Um, not to say that, that what we do doesn't matter, matter. but the point is perspective, Absolutely. <laughs> the things that maybe seem great to us as human beings in God's eyes and the eyes of, you know, the angels and the saints in heaven yeah. may be incredibly small. So it's not to say don't strive to be the best man that you can be. But keep things in perspective. Amen. You're not you're not God. You're you're just kind of a dust mite in the scheme of things. Oh, right. uh, and remember that. Yeah. Uh, and and don't treat others uh, as less than you. That's right. Yeah, because they're not. Right. That's exactly right. right. So wonderful. So the last and final one, and one that we've talked about uh, in private conversations, is uh, you know an authentic gentleman never gossips. Yeah. So. Gossiping is toxic in all situations. It's toxic in um, work life. It's toxic in family life. It's toxic in uh, friendships, and it's um, I guess toxic in parish life even. Yeah. You know, and so gossiping can lead to uh, the sin of detraction or calumny or just many other. Um, areas of of sin Mm -hmm. and so we need to keep gossiping in check because when gossip occurs it's not really benefiting anyone 
Yeah. You know, it, but it's that temptation though to share the news, you know, that other people um, might have, or the, or the, you know, the, the salacious, you know, uh, yeah, um, topic, or you yeah. know, whatever the case might be. Well, and a lot of times guys associate gossip with women. Well, guys don't do that. Right. Absolutely not true. Uh, men can are just as tempted by it as, as other things. And sometimes other sins that are more obvious, like lust and things like that, are the ones that we focus on. That's right. Um, but oftentimes for men, it can be a power game. Yeah. You know, where we can, by bad-mouthing someone else, we make ourselves look better uh, and, you know, puff ourselves up and, you know, uh, ruin someone else's reputation in order to advance you know, a place as often happens for men is in the workplace. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, my boss, he's such a jerk. He's such an idiot. You right. know, uh, things would be so much better if he did it my way. That's right. Um, and we can often take this very critical condemning attitude towards those in leadership above us um, or around us in order to advance ourselves. Yeah. Um, and that's that's toxic. It is. Absolutely. You think about the workplace and the same sort of gossiping as did you hear that I uh, that he made this decision? You know that yeah. he, he did this with um, you know with uh, funds, or he did this with something along those lines, and and that uh, that helps no one. First right. off, it might not be true. Yeah. And second, it, it helps no one. You know, mm -hmm. no one leaves a conversation with gossip or venting. You know, and thinks. Hmm. Yeah. I felt refreshed. I'm glad yeah. I did that. Uh, that was I really felt the spirit moving. Man. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. And so, if it's not pointed uh, towards the good, it's pointed towards something else. Yes. So mm -hmm. now it's number seven of, of our. So list those here. are seven markers that um, I think all men can apply to their lives, yeah. uh, and that can really help us advance on the road to virtue. Um, yeah. But that, we're going to end with um, one of our favorite parts of the show, the nightcap, yep. which is. Our manly tool or item uh, that's important to us that we really enjoy. And today we're going to talk about a fun one uh, that's kind of emblazoned in the Catholic Gentleman logo, but that's, that's pipes. That's pipes, absolutely. Yeah. And so I'll start, but I want to make sure, Sam, you get to show your pipe roll there. But um, so the pipe I brought today is my uh, church warden pipe. So you might not know uh, the name of it. You might see it as the Gandalf pipe or the Lord of the Rings pipe or something along those lines. But it's a church warden pipe that's been around for ages. And it's got this extra long stem. And so there's a lot of different thoughts on why there's an extra long stem. So I know one of them that I first heard was, oh, well, it cools down the, um, the air you know, coming in so that it helps you avoid tongue bite, yeah. you know, which is yeah. when your tongue starts, starts burning. Um, but anybody who's smoked a church warden knows that's not really the that's case. Not really true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tongue, tongue bite uh, have it just the same. And uh, if, if you're not careful. So the other thing is, is that like around the um, gentlemanly circles, uh, you know, where people or men were gathering and discussing and talking about, you know, civ civic duties or church um, duties uh, or just uh, societal life in general. Um, having the bowl further down mm -hmm. uh, didn't keep all the smoke in your eyes so that you oh. could still keep that eye attention uh, with with someone else. So whatever the case might be. Maybe it just looks cool. It, I was just going to say, <laughs> you finished it. Whatever the case might be, it looks really cool. And uh, that's why I like this one. My wife uh, got it for me on a Father's Day of mine. And um, there's something very uh, sleek and smooth with the bend of um, of the pipe that um, that I uh, I enjoy. So. Yeah, well, that's awesome. I love church wardens. Yeah. Uh, they make you feel like you're Gandalf or that's something. Right. <laughs> and, but this is my pipe uh, that I brought. It's a Danish pipe. Crown of Denmark is the is the maker of this. Uh, but it's kind of cool because it's got this little uh, roughage here on the side. Um, but it's different on the other side, and it gives the bowl, even though it's a symmetrically shaped bowl, it looks different depending on what angle you look at this pipe. So it's kind of a it's kind of a unique piece, um, but uh, kind of a beautiful uh, br uh, bronze colored briar finish here, um, short stem. Um, but just a really fun pipe, and I really enjoy smoking. It feels really good in the hand. Does it get um, Does it get hot? In the hand, or no, does it, it doesn't. Yeah. It's, it's kind of got a thick wall yeah. here, um, which you can see. 
which keeps it from oh, like burning that. your hand or burning anything your like hand. that. So um, I really like this one. It's one of my one of my favorite ones to smoke. So uh, anyway, if you haven't tried pipe smoking, uh, it's really a pleasurable thing. I know everybody's got different perspectives on yeah. smoking and whether or not it's good for you, but. Um, you know, it's just a great way to relax and it's actually very conducive to contemplation and, and deep thoughts. <laughs> Absolutely. And one extra added benefit is, is that pipe, uh, roll that you have there. This this leather one that I think your wife bought for you. I think That's you told right. Me. Yeah. She got it for me for Christmas one year. It's a great way to take a pipe with you when you're traveling. Uh, it just unrolls here. This is really, we can't feel it, but it's really nice, soft leather. Um, I can it, attest. It unfolds, and there's a place here for your pipe tools and your lighter, some pipe cleaners, and you put the pipe right in here, um, and then you can put your tobacco right along here in this flap, and then you just close it all up, and you roll it uh, into a, a nice travel case that you can take with you um, to the airport or wherever. So. I love it. So hopefully um, you enjoyed that, and hopefully you have some pipes of your own. Feel free to take a picture, leave it in the comment sections, things like that, um, or pass it along to us on our website. You can check out our website, catholicgentleman.com, uh, for this and all other episodes, uh, so I encourage you to head over there now. But as we end every episode, constantly with that reminder that we all need. Be a man, be a saint. Thanks for watching.